Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. In today's video we're gonna be playing with some Apes Psycho, which is which is a deck that was requested recently on my channel, so I've decided why not let's play it. And it's not like this deck is bad in meta or something, it's just I'm not like S tier player of Apes Psycho deck, so I don't like have a 100% confidence to show it very often. But on the other hand, I'm not afraid of that deck as well, so I might as well just uh, showcase it and try to not die to the first push. So I'm gonna actually try to eliminate this Necromancer and basically try to mitigate this damage because my opponent actually set up a very nice push uh, to start the game. So fortunately for us, we're gonna be able to get away with pretty hefty defense right here, uh, which is obviously very nice. Since my opponent set up a Brute in the back, it was very fortunate for us because we've got some very early damage, which definitely is a good thing for us. I think this time we actually want to start with setting up a cannon, and I want to save my uh, Rolling Steel and, uh, uh, and Earthquake against his Necromancer, because obviously that's gonna be the scariest card uh, I'm gonna be going up against. So. I, know, I think I'm gonna actually use uh, this combination right here because I don't see him realistically uh, posing any threat to me anytime soon. Uh, this bomber will lock onto the tower which is unfortunately even two times so definitely not the best defense on my part. But at the same time I think I should have been counterplaying with apes on the opposite side. It's definitely the play right now as I see the matchup because my opponent will be just striving to play these massive brute uh, pushes over and over again so if I can time my counterplay correctly okay okay I I timed it perfectly like I said right now I'm I'm willing to be as fast as possible in eliminating the danger Obviously the ape will get some shots on my tower, but it doesn't really matter too much. This can should be enough to stop this longsword. I'm gonna just play apes once again, just to pressure, try to disrupt his uh, flow of uh, constant pushes over and over again. He's gonna... okay, he's not gonna be even able to set up a boot in front of the mother... Uh, Skeleton, which is absolutely perfect. I'm gonna just spell out this Necromancer and set up another can. He's gonna try to, I don't know, try to outsmart me. I'm gonna play some Skeletons here, uh, some Ice Tiny here, and I think we're gonna be able to get away with nice defense once again. He's gonna be playing Brute in the back. I'm gonna instantly counterplay with Apes on the opposite side. It is a general rule of thumb. Like I have said, I'm not like the best player of this deck, but I know at least the general rules, which are very nice to know if you want to navigate pretty much any matchup with this deck. So yeah, that's gonna be pretty much enough to win this matchup. My opponent plays bullets, which is definitely not the optimal way to play. I'm gonna play some spells to support my apes push. Gunner will finish out the tower and that's gonna be game number one. Very nicely done. Let's jump to the game number two right now. And in game number two, we're gonna be up against Sofia Nicole, who's gonna be running a Dark Knight, which is, uh, some would say, the uh, hardest count of counters against the apes, and I definitely can see it uh, to a point. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the struggle being that, uh, yeah, uh, the Dark Knight is uh, the direct counter to the, uh, to the apes. I would love to actually preserve this gunner alive, and I got it, so I would say pretty nice first defense, and yeah, obviously this game uh, would have been tricky had my opponent uh, played some uh, optimal Dark Knight deck, and uh, Von Keck is not the best uh, accompany for a Dark Knight, because usually you don't want to uh, like, set up a very big push with a Dark Knight, uh, when your pretty much win condition can be countered by a cheap spell. So that's pretty much not the play style that you're going for and that's why I think my opponent's deck is just suboptimal and 
Uh, hopefully this is gonna just give us a very nice time uh, fighting this. I'm gonna stop this uh, uh, king right here. I'm gonna actually try to keep my gamma alive, kill this king, and we're gonna get away with another nice defense. Obviously Dark Knight jumped on my gunner, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna support it because Obviously, against Dark Knight, the worst thing you can do is play apes at zero and pretty much allow your opponent to counterplay you uh, as soon as it's physically possible. Here I'm gonna try to mitigate the damage and bleeding uh, from this phone cake because my opponent uh, correctly recognizes I have nothing for it to deal with. So, yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm gonna set up gunner. I think... It in general, it's gonna be a very nice play all around. No matter what I do, I'm gonna play some airplay here just to kill uh, my opponent's uh, troops. Uh, okay, my opponent will be actually very smart with this rolling steel. Obviously, uh, the interaction being rolling steel plus uh, Dark Knight jump will kill uh, will kill the gunner. So. That was the interaction he was going for, at least I hope it was the interaction he was going for. I'm gonna set up I can because I know he's gonna go for a uh, Dark Knight, like that. I'm gonna play Far Tiny for, for his phone cake. I'm gonna set up some skeletons and I actually will fail in that, so that's gonna, that's gonna suck a bit. In fact, I'm in a little bit of trouble right now. Uh, yeah, I was able to mitigate the damage, but the ending of this game certainly wasn't clean obviously i spent five mana to counterplay on the opposite side and i didn't have to but at the same time it's pretty much the correct way to play so i might as well just stick to the principles usually you won't get a tower down against a dark knight in first two minutes of the game so i was just trying to show how to play this matchup uh, all around and i think this game was a pretty nice example how to actually play against dark knight basically if your opponent plays dark knight instantly counterplay with apes on the opposite side and uh, yeah don't play apes at zero no matter what uh, the hand is because uh, chances are your opponent will have a dark knight and then uh, you have no counterplay and you will be very behind in mana so yeah uh, that, that's gonna be the game number two let's jump to the game number three and in the next game of today's video, we'll be actually facing Fran Chico with 1500 mils and playing fifth first play, which pretty much may be okay. I didn't expect this to dash, honestly. Probably should have blocked it. Either way, my opponent will be very likely will be very likely to play a Viking Bird Spam, which is obviously a very popular deck. Uh, he's gonna be playing his own variation with a helicopter. I'm gonna play some. Skeletons to just distract his ghost. I think Gunner wins this interaction, should be like on 1 HP. I'm gonna play Apes just to counterplay and yeah, force him to respond in some uh, not comfy way. I'm gonna play Ice Tiny just to make sure this thief won't jump anywhere. I'm gonna just play Ken to minimize the damage and unfortunately my opponent will be playing Flying Bomb which is a very good spell against my deck. Pretty much counters everything that he needs to counter. It gets pretty nice trade against Ken, excellent trade against Apes, and it weakens Gunner to the point when, where it can be just Blitz off the map, and that's definitely a good thing that you want to have when you're playing this matchup. So yeah, I'm gonna play Ken here, I'm gonna play Skeletons just to block this Ghost, and right now he's gonna get a very nice trade. Right here, I'm gonna play far time just to minimize the copter's damage to one shot, and my apes will actually get to the tower. So my opponent played flying bomb, so I instantly knew that is my timing to pretty much go in because he didn't have uh, uh, either ghost nor uh, nor flying bomb to stop my apes. So yeah, that was pretty much the best timing you can get against this matchup to get damage, and I definitely did so. 1500 on his side, 2400 on my side, definitely good position and I'm pretty sure that his last card is Viking, so I'm gonna just counterplay, even though he has flying bomb right now, uh, he definitely should be using it, but yeah, now he used it, maybe this fire time will, okay, this fire time will actually connect, that's gonna be a very nice position for me, I'm gonna play Kevin here, 
Try to play some skills here. Try to basically mitigate the damage from the all sides. I think this defense was pretty clean. I didn't receive too much damage. Obviously, the helicopter lock onto the tower, but was the damage I kind of had to take. Uh, otherwise, the things would be pretty, uh, pretty not fun uh, for me. I'm gonna actually try to defend this. Uh, this should be no problem. I'm gonna play Skeletus here. He's gonna be playing actually. Uh, Rolling Steel, which is definitely the card I didn't expect, and at this point I think the best thing we can do is just to play some spells, because I am pretty sure he can fully counter my apes. Okay, he actually disconnected, which is very fun. We're gonna just finish the tower with the apes, and it's gonna be GG's nice blade. Let's jump to the game number 3, GG's. And the next game will be against user with the number over 400,000. I'm not gonna read it in a specific, but like I always say, if a person has this kind of nickname, usually they didn't uh, type their name during the uh, uh, stage of creating an account, so they got the default username, which is basically uh, their user ID. So we're gonna be playing against this guy. He's gonna be playing Bomb Skeleton and T-Rex, which is uh, even on itself a very weird composition. Uh, I'm gonna just try to defend it uh, as well as I physically can. We're gonna play some Ice Tiny here just to stop this T-Rex and unfortunately we're gonna take one hit and wow this Fun King actually will charge so I expect I expected this uh, Fawn King to charge on the Fire Tiny, but the Fire Tiny was actually on time to jump, which is definitely not the thing I wanted to see. Bond will be actually mirroring the Skeleton Horde, which, frankly enough, may be actually a good play, because I didn't have anything for that, so I'm gonna just counterplay with A, because I know for sure he doesn't have a good response for them. And thus, I'm gonna be getting a lots and lots of damage, just like that. Very cool to see. I'm gonna cycle just my gunner. Uh, very simple play. No need to overcomplicate stuff. I'm gonna play Fire Tiny just to delete his Skeleton Horde, and he's gonna actually go for a uh, second Skeleton Horde. This time, I think I may get away with just playing Skeletons. Maybe even not. I'm gonna need... Okay. I should be playing this Ice Tiny uh, further uh, away. I'm taking a lot of unnecessary damage against the Skeleton Horde, but at the same time you have to remember that every time he plays the Skeleton Horde, it's like 7 mana commitment for him, so definitely uh, I'm just buying myself... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just buying myself a very comfortable position where I am always up mana, and... Uh, yeah, that, that's why even though he's getting some damage, it's absolutely not worrying because I'm getting way more uh, right back. And that's absolutely fine by me. He's gonna be playing another skeleton for I don't think he realizes that I can actually absolutely counter it. And uh, even though I would love to keep uh, applying uh, pressure on the opposite side, there's a point where it gets actually annoying and I'm gonna just keep playing throwing spells. So my opponent will be playing Viking which is very interesting play uh, considering the fact that he has uh, seven apes on his tower uh, Viking tower to be uh, exact. So yeah that's gonna be the game number four. Very easy I would say and with that let's jump to the game number five and wrap this video. And the last game of today's video will be against Erika SR who has 3000 mils, which means that it is certainly a good player. He's gonna be running Dark Knight and it's pretty much the thing I already should be knowing since I faced this player a handy couple of times. But this ghost, I would believe, yeah, it's not gonna be doing too much damage and this Dark Knight should be absolutely shut down. So my opponent will be running Dark Knight against Apes, definitely not a good look, but at the same time I think we're absolutely okay. He's gonna play twins while I'm not having can, so definitely a good trade for him because I had to overspend, and uh, usually that's not a good thing. Uh, right now he's gonna actually kind of use my bad hand uh, to make some plays, 
I don't think I uh, have a, a good trade against it. He's gonna play another ghost and uh, my opponent I think will be pretty smart and just hold the Dark Knight for... Uh, for the apes every single time. Uh, and yeah, as I'm saying this, he's instantly playing uh, three gunners, which is definitely the play I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this early. Oh, uh, yeah, will be uh, forced to uh, get more creative in order to. Uh, get advantage against me. One more thing I think will be a very good uh, asset for me in this matchup will be yes, that's right, this mana collector. So as soon as we see the mana collector we should be like aggressive to the point of no return because we always can get a positive trade against his mana collector and that's pretty much the only moment in the game where we can get damage. So I'm gonna play fire tiny. I'm gonna play some skeletons, I think, yeah, that they, were, they were decent, not gonna complain about that. I'm gonna play some Airquake, just to weaken two gunners, that's gonna be the motto of the game pretty much. I'm gonna play some cannon here, I would love to get some damage on this gunner, you know? okay, and last second I've actually prevented this uh, this menace of a, uh, holy cow, uh, the twins to, from connecting to my tower. It would have been a very tragic way to lose it. Uh, I'm gonna play Airquake once again on these gunners and I'm gonna actually protect my gunner right here. He plays a uh, very interesting cyclone which I don't agree with and right now we get an actually very scary timing for him because Obviously, our apes will get cleaned up and he's gonna get a very scary timing after that, but... Uh, yeah, if we can hold it, we basically win the game on the spot, so... Uh, that's definitely the moment where we have to just use everything we have. I'm gonna be definitely trying to do so. Uh, I think I'm actually on time with everything so that's gonna be a very nice defense right here and my opponent spams just emotes back i think he has one more push because i've spent a lot of mana to make this defense and yeah he's gonna obviously try i don't blame him for trying because obviously what what else here is i'm gonna play second cannon i'm gonna play just ice tiny i'm gonna play rolling steel just mitigate the risk and that's gonna be GG's nice play to end this game. Honestly, it was a very stressful one because even though Erika is playing very off meta deck, he kinda knows how to navigate pretty much every single matchup and even though I think I had the counter, it was very scary at the end. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed this Apes gameplay, definitely consider leaving subscribe subscription to my YouTube channel because I post Boomerang again gameplay every single day and i think you don't want to miss it out so yeah um, thanks for watching till the end and i'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Marina.